Hello friends, I'm Dr. Shimpa Sharma, IQSC Director, Professor in General Medicine from the DY Patel Education Society Deemed University, Kolhapur. And today I'll be sharing a few pointers for what we need to remember when we go up to record a lecture. Now the premise of today's talk is I'm speaking to teaching faculty, to those of us who are recording lectures which are uploaded on the YouTube website, the LMS, what have you. We do have a university schedule for recording lectures and some of us are additionally doing voluntary lecture recording. So this applies to most of these kind of teachers. Now the, after the title slide, the first slide necessarily needs to have this validation. This is basically ensuring that the person who has prepared the uh, presentation takes full responsibility and it is approved by somebody else seeing it. A peer review is a must. The approval could be done by a group of teachers, it could be done by head of department or institution. Now, let us first premises, these uploaded lectures do not replace classroom teaching. So we do not need 45 minute lectures. The topics need to be different, advanced topics, tough topics, uh, topics that would help them to handle their practical training better. And that is why they need to be shorter. So between 10 to 15 minutes is what would be ideal, would be permissible, ideal would be less than 10 minutes. One slide usually takes a minute to talk or it could take 30 seconds depending on the content. And remember, slides with headings, cartoons, images, uh, the video clips that we put have their own time that they take, so we need to keep that into account. Now these are some backgrounds that we see on different presentations and it is ideal to have a plain white background, especially for academic presentations, they do not distract, they give clear contrast and becomes very easy to read for people. Yes, you may want a slightly light colored background, that's fine. You can do it up with images if you feel it looks very boring, but keep a light background. Coming to the selection of the font, you have the sans serif font and the serif font, we are all aware of them. I have listed some of the more popularly accepted fonts for academic presentations. But what is more important is we need to avoid fancy fonts. They distract, they are difficult to read, we need a single font throughout the presentation and if you do want to contrast, do not try and go in for multiple fonts, not more than two fonts on a slide is permitted. Try and stay to a single font and use the same family fonts for contrast. I will cover that shortly again, but first let's look at the font size. You will realize that different, si different fonts give you visually a different size of the font uh, when you change it. So, Ideally, title of the slide 36 to 44, text 24 to 48 and subtext 18 to 24 should be what we all stay with. And for this university, all recordings, it would be preferable to stay with Calibri or Garamond. Now what do we mean by font family? This is a font family. So in the Arial font, I have multiple options of changing the appearance of my presentation and this can be used for contrast. Most, most fonts have these kind of options. The next important part of our presentation is the margins. We must have margins. Uniformity, consistency, duplicity, duplicability, uh, all of it is taken care of and more important, it makes sure we do not have slides like this. Now this is an 18 font size and 267 words in the text and this slide is overcrowded. If I put margins, it's very apparent to me that my material is spilling out of the margin even though I have used an 18 font size. I have to delete the lines to make my 18 font size fit within the presentation. If I take it up to 24 font size, see what happens. My content again further reduces. So margin plus font size limits content. Let's look at one more thing and that what we must remember and that is we need to create these margins. There are no default margins in PowerPoint. So creating a difference of about 14 and a half to 15 points on either side, left and right, or seven to eight on the top and bottom of the slide is usually enough. Left side alignment is easier to read. It's easier to uh, keep consistency in your presentation, which makes it look even more attractive. Another part of the presentation we need to remember is how many lines can we have? Is that crowded slide all right? Lines have a rule of six, seven, and nine. Line spacing, ideal 1.5 line spacing. Now what is six, seven, and nine? It basically says six words in six lines, 
uh, six words per line for six lines, seven words in each line, average for seven lines, and nine for nine. Let us try and stay with six and seven rule. Nine rule becomes the exception. This particular slide has got seven lines. It has 43 words, so roughly seven, six are 42, and a 24 font size with 1.5 line spacing. Now let's go back to that 24 font margin content of ours. It has 157 words. If I take it to a 1.5 line space, I'm again forced to reduce my count to 108 words, right? So here I have 24 font, 1.5 line spacing, 108 words from the original 267 words that I started with. However, this still does not follow the rule of 6, 7 or 9 and therefore I need to read the content, I need to take out the highlighted points and fit it into a format which follows the rule of 6, 7 and 9. So these are the slides that we need to remember. This again has 6 lines with 37 words, so 6, 6 are 36 and of course all the other parameters are written here. Another thing to remember is the right top margin, uh, the right top end of the slide is for our image when we are in recording. So we should try as far as possible to avoid content on this side, which I haven't done. And uh, no images should overlap with that area. Now let's come to images. Is there a need for image? A slide like this definitely needs an image. But what we have to ask ourselves is that Im if the image relevant? If it is not relevant to the text, it may be a good idea to look for a relevant image. The clarity of images is important. This is distracting. Remember, when you're putting an image, you may do up the slide as pretty as you want. You may put an image in place, but when the image is blurred, it takes away from the presentation. Look at the other image, and this is a much more clearer image. So when you're deciding as to which image you want, keep in size the clarity of the image, the size of the image. Unless your slide is meant to display an image, the image should not occupy more than one third of your slide or at the maximum half your slide. The color of your image is important. It should match your theme. It should go with the background. The mode of the image is important. Having images that give you a negative connotation, that are unpleasant, that are disturbing to see, are better to be avoided. And it is easier to use images which have a positive impact. Animations are to be used only where they add to your presentation or in some way are changing with what you are speaking. Video clips do not uh, work most of the time. I'm very scared of them. But if you can ensure that your video clips are working, then all we need to make sure is the duration of time occupied by your video clips in total does not occupy more than 40% of your total presentation time and ideally closer to 20% of the time. Now, there are certain topics like communication skills where you may need to have more videos and I would leave it to the judgment of the teacher. Now when you come for a recording, we all know we have to face the audience, so that's important is to face the camera. So if I start reading from my laptop, because I don't know my material, you're not going to be able to see me facing the camera. So it is important that we know our material, a little bit of practice helps. Stay in line of sight. We are used to walking up and down the stage in the classroom, so we need to kind of hold ourselves in one place and stay in one place as far as possible. Use gestures, no problem, but using gestures that occupy your face, that cover your face, are probably to be avoided, so we need to be careful of that. The tone of voice needs to be clear, it needs to be conversational, but more important, if for any reason you have a sore throat, you feel you're not comfortable that day speaking, it's a good idea to reschedule your lecture rather than take a recording. So to recap, the duration of the presentation needs to be definitely under 15 minutes. A light background, margins, Calibri or Garamond font, using font family for, uh, family for contrast. The font sizes are clearly written. Line spacing of 1.5, preferably rule of 6 or 7 to be used. Images and animations where required, cautiously and of good quality. The recording, face the camera, stay in one place, practice. Look at the camera, practice, know your material, and of course ensure that your video clips are working. Most important, I think let's be organized. Let's be professional, provide the PPT to the media room on the previous day. Let's come on time. Inform in advance if we are unable to come for any reason. Reschedule which lectures have been missed. But if we continuously reschedule lectures, then rescheduling more than twice will be need to be needed to be approved by the dean. 
in the event of any technical difficulties the media room will inform you that you know this lecture won't be able we won't be able to record the lecture and in case you have any challenges with the media room you're welcome to inform your head of department or the coordinator thank you so much for a patient listening and your feedback would be very helpful do please scan this qr code and let me know what you feel thank you again